Well, it's Tri City Sports now in our second hour. By the way, we will have, if everything goes, yeah, I'm planning on having a Christmas show. Let everybody else be the slackers. History of the Blue Gray game, maybe. Try to get Ed Podolak to come on. <laughs> but there'll be no slacking from me on Christmas Day. We'll be, I know a lot of people, and, and you know, people depend on this show. A lot of times they depend on uh, talk radio and such. Uh, and, you know, I'll be honest with you here. The, the negative stereotype of talk radio is that it relates to lonely people. Well, maybe so. And, you know, if you've got a big staple of friends, you know, and all this, uh, you don't need to call up a talk show to talk football. You've got your buddies and all that. But you don't have the influence, obviously, around your buddies, A. B, you, I, I think also that, you know, sports talk has gone a little bit away from uh, that sort of, the, you know, caller interaction, because a lot of social media does that to get your uh, voice out, although I still think that talk radio might be the best. But the other thing is that the host, yes, the egotistical maniac such as myself, wants to have his opinion out there and be the influential one. Guy calling up saying that, uh, you know, the quarterback should be determined on the signs of the Zodiac. No. No, 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 that's not, you know. Now, we're supposed to have know what we're talking about, but nevertheless, I do think having a Ken Pomeroy on uh, really does give a lot of great insight. And, you know, it is a great insight, the, the uh, expansion of conferences. And that's why, and we got to talk to Scott Carter about this, maybe. That's why I do wonder, when we look at Georgia Southern and ETSU tonight, uh and I guess I've always wanted ETSU to get bigger, to be, you know, I've called them the big league team in town. But then again, that big league is not much. I mean, yes, they could win the national championship, but it's always theoretically in basketball. You know, Michigan State, they can win the national championship. ETSU, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah you know, the budget isn't as big and, you know, but then again, they did make the tournament. They were invited to the dance. The thing is, the Southern Conference, traditionally, it's sort of like being invited to the Playboy Mansion, but uh, your youth and is not what it once was, you know. And your, your fame is, you're, uh, you know, Mr. Jones from Johnson City going to the Playboy Mansion. You might as well have bare feet and a paper suitcase, it would almost seem. But we still want to be there, don't we? You know? I know I do. I'm going to try to see if I can't get Sarah Jean Underwood as an in-studio guest. I think that that will really knock us out here on Tri-City Sports Now. Uh, you know, talk about the bowl game. Normally, I don't think UAB in Ohio would be of great attention, but just talking about uh, development of ETSU. This is one of the reasons why I think, although they would refuse to admit it, Carl Torbush resigns. And guess what? You know, he's the greatest coach ever. He's 11 and 22, but he has a foundation for ETSU. First recruiting class, they start signing JUCOs, which is something that Torbush never really wanted to do. He did occasionally, but he never wanted to do. There were 13 transfers on this past team of ETSU football. All of a sudden, that's, and we don't know what's going on with the assistant coaches. So, the staff is not necessarily being retained. There's no pressure on Randy Sanders to keep a Mike O'Kane, a Mike Rader, or a Billy Taylor, who's very popular in the Tri-Cities. And why not? He helped bring back football uh, to ETSU as a member of the BFFF and uh, really always talking, you know, keeping that thought alive. And, uh, you know, there are several schools in you know, Detroit. Dropped football years ago, didn't bring it back. Villanova brought it back. New Haven and D2 brought it back. Uh, Samford brought it back, you know. San Francisco brought it back, and then they cut it again. There you go. So um, uh, there are a lot of schools. that I, I like Northeastern's brought it back. Boston hasn't brought it back. Boston University. Wichita State, which you just mentioned, hasn't brought it back. So, 
Sir Rollins hasn't. There, there's them reaching the bottom of the barrel there, but uh, you know, but there are a lot of school. ETSU did bring it back, and I think it's because of people. Uh, I'd like to think myself, but also Billy Taylor, members of the old B Triple F, Jerry Robertson's group, uh, that were instrumental in just keeping the notion alive that there could be football returning to ETSU. Gerald Sensabaugh was one of those guys. Did that? He spoke. I, I arranged them the talk to the BFFF one year after playing on the last ETSU team, the 2003 team. So you have ETSU Georgia Southern when on the gridiron, uh, ETSU beat Georgia Southern way back 2001. It was Gerald Sensabaugh who had a key interception in the game. He was a freshman at the time. So there you go. A little local sports history for you here on Tri-City Sports Now. Uh, so we talked a lot about the shame of Tennessee not playing Chuck Cooper, but coming a long way since then. We talked where uh, the Bucks are now and such. I do want to talk a little bit, though, about that bowl game. You're looking at UAB, which brought back football. UAB was as – I'll come right out and say UAB was as stupid as ETSU was in 2003. One of the reasons ETSU dropped football in 2003, they didn't realize that they were going to get kicked out of the Southern Conference if they did. They were naive enough to believe that they could get away with it, even though Davidson and VMI not dropping their football programs outright but merely de-emphasizing it, that led to tickets out of the SOCON before. Somehow they thought they could avoid that. They were wrong was Paul Stanton. In fact, there was a time where he went, I'm told, to a president's meeting of the SOCON to ask to keep membership in the conference, and everybody, all the college presidents of the SOCON said, where have you been? You've been here seven years. This is the first meeting you've attended. If we keep football, you're going to. Goodbye. Similar thing happened to UAB with Conference USA. I think they thought that they could get, and they realized all of a sudden that UAB without football was not a desirable uh, membership. And so they said, well, I guess we got to bring back football. By the way, UAB actually, although it wasn't a big money maker by any means, uh, this idea that football costs a lot of money, you know, we've got to, it's actually the Title IX restrictions, or I shouldn't say restrictions, but no, it's Title IX that costs a lot of money. Uh, by having a football program in, say, the FBS, you have to have 85 scholarships. Well, you have to find then 85 scholarships, and there are ways that people are trying to work around it, but you've got to pretty much have 85 scholarships somewhere else for women in your program. And you need to have 16 programs. This is why ETSU has discussed uh, things like field hockey for you know the future, I personally think bowling. Bowling actually is the way Florida State stays NCAA compliant. Bowling is officially a women's sport. Had scholarship doesn't cost anything. Really, it doesn't. You know, but they give a scholarship. It's a way that you stay Title IX compliant to have football. As I said, it's how Florida State does it. Uh, I think it's how ETSU should do it. To be brutally honest with you. Anyway, just talking about this UAB brought back football first year. Eight and four and in a bowl game. First year, eight and four and in a bowl game. Compare that to eleven and twenty-two startup for ETSU, and then you start realizing why Randy Sanders is now the coach. And despite the fact that ETSU, as they are wont to do, will tell you that everything is just so wonderful that their uh, their actions concerning the coaching staff after that eleven and twenty-two uh, start, and for that matter, the construction of a roster, speak otherwise. Anyway, uh, so um, try to you just when you come following ETSU, you just come to accept this. You know, no matter what happens, you know you can eleven and twenty two. You know, Carl Torbush created a foundation here, despite the fact we're going against his philosophies and replacing all the coaches. He started a foundation here. I'll just say anything at times, you know. But I do think this game, and I thought Ken Pomeroy did make a great point. Why do we have fewer conferences getting multiple bids? Well, look at, say, the SOCON. I mean, Appalachian State and Georgia Southern now in the Sun Belt. College of Charleston is in the CAA. Davidson, they're not a Catholic school. They're in the Atlantic 10. Atlantic 10 
historically has lots of Catholic schools. Check it out. You know, St. Bonaventure, Duquesne, even St. Louis. You know. Would would DePaul be better fit in the Big Ten, in the Atlantic Ten, excuse me. No, not the Big Ten, but the Atlantic Ten. Question to me. Maybe a little de-emphasis, so you don't necessarily want to do that. But, you know, uh, I do remember when John Calipari was at Massachusetts, there was a real conversation at that time. What is the better basketball conference, the Atlantic Ten or the Big East? Anyway. Point here being, I look at this game and... I start to wonder, you know, I talk about legitimacy, trying to be more cosmopolitan, getting the Tri-Cities more on the sports map. Talked about this week, oh, MLS team in Nashville? Hey, what about a USL team then playing at Summers Taylor and an affiliate of, I believe they're going to call it Nashville SC? What about it? Why wouldn't you? And that would be a top-level minor pro sports team. It's unrealistic for the Tri-Cities to get major professional sports, but a higher level of minor league pro sports? Yeah, I think so. Why wouldn't this market, if a new arena was built, which would definitely help out the ETSU basketball program, support an ECHL team or an indoor football team? Why... Do we have the Appalachian League? Well, we've always had it here. Okay. But really a bunch of players that, you know, on every team, maybe one guy makes the major leagues, you know, low level of ball, not a lot of publicity. Why not a double A team? And I thought, you know, why not look for, why not look for ETSU to be in a two bid league? I do say, I'm not sure that that won't be the Southern Conference, but I guess you can't keep losing members, as Ken Pomeroy alluded to in our earlier interview, and be that two-bid league. Oh, if the you know Southern Conference still had, I mean, you want to get, get right down to it, and let's not put down 1932, you know, becoming the SEC. I mean, we're not talking about that. But what if the SoCon still had a Davidson, a College of Charleston, Elon in basketball, not so much. Obviously, this year, Georgia Southern, Marshall. And for that matter, if you really want to go back, a George Washington and a West Virginia. Although it really was never in the cards, I think, for West Virginia to stay in the Southern Conference as their uh, program grew. But I just ask, hey, West Virginia, why not an ETSU? I mean, are we behind Morgantown? Are we a lesser geographical era area? I don't think so. I know they're a state school. Uh, anyway, I just looked at that, and when I see this game, I do wonder, okay, Having the college basketball season really means something. Having the college basketball season be, if we win 20 games, we're going to be talked about in the national discussion of college basketball and not an afterthought with Quinnipiac or something. Anna, how does that happen at ETSU? It's one game must be taken as such, but I do think it's a big game when it's Southern Conference versus Sunbelt. A statement will be made by the winning team on what the better conference is. An argument can be made. And one also wonders if ETSU, let's just say, were to join the Sunbelt, have to go FBS in football, but if they did, would that make the Sunbelt a two-bid league again? How much more prestigious? I'm speculating. I'm throwing it out there. But I like to do that. I like to shake up the uh, traditional norms here on Tri-City Sports Now and such. Let's uh, uh, come back with that and I'll break down the actual ball game between Georgia Southern and ETSU when we come back. Oh, it's a biggie. 9-3 and three, Georgia Southern, 8-4 and four, ETSU. 
Next month, the conference schedule starts. Yeah, it's a biggie. Tri-City Sports now coming back after this. Holiday parties, celebrations. Let Happy Hour Tri-City Liquor be your one-stop destination. Get your holiday spirits less expensive and Happy Hour Tri-City Liquor than anywhere in the Tri-Cities. Expect friendly and helpful service with a knowledgeable staff there to help you. All your